Backgrounds. Hey there, VidTuners. You are now more than ready to start using VidTune. In this video, we will show you how to add and use backgrounds. So let's get you started right away. Adding a background. I'm pretty sure you have heard about what drag and drop is all about. VidTunes has been built with that same approach too. In order to add elements to your timeline, you simply have to drag it and drop it. Here in the backgrounds, you just need to decide what topic you would like to create a video for. There are many scenes you can build up. You could build up something related to traveling or something about Christmas or a scene related to crime or transportation. A working from home background is included. Sports backgrounds are here too. An office background, street background, library background, and a gym background, plus many more. Once you decide which one to use, you can simply select the background of your choice by holding the left button of your mouse, move it to the left side of the application, and you will notice the image track will be highlighted in red. So, move it there until the image is over that image track highlighted in red, and then release the left button of your mouse. And there, you will see the background image of your choice. And that was easy and fun, right? Customizing a background. Now, let's customize the background, which is something that's very easy to do. You can click and hold the image inside the big black screen and move it wherever you want. For now, move it to the top left corner of the screen, then click and hold the red arrows you see in the bottom right corner of the image, and you can then move your mouse to the bottom right corner of the screen so you can increase its size to cover the whole black screen. If you want to focus a more specific area of the background, you can keep moving and increase the size of the image, but you can't enlarge the image too much as it might lose quality. Awesome guys, let's now get into the settings area. In order for the settings icon to be enabled, an element should already be inside the timeline and also should be selected and highlighted in red. As you see in this case, our background is there and is highlighted in red. If not, you simply have to click on it. Now you can go and click in the settings icon to see how you can further customize the background. In this area, there are different things you can do to the background. You can decide the start time and the duration time in the background in the timeline by typing your desired values, but this is something you can do a lot easier directly in the timeline. Here in the timeline, you can hold the background and move it to the right or to the left. And also, you can extend its length by clicking and holding the red little arrows you see in the bottom right corner of the background and moving it to the right. If you want to delete the background, you can simply click on the X icon. Okay, back to the settings. What you can do to the background image is to flip it. You simply click on the check icon to flip the background and click it again to flip it back to its original view. If you click on the background color check, you will change the image of the background to a color. This means the image is gone and you can use the color instead. For changing the color, you simply click on your desired color by using the square color picker. You can also click and hold the left button of your mouse and move it around so you can preview more colors right away. You can also use these little icons right here to look for a specific color using the RGB color code approach. You can do the same with the vertical color picker. You can also use the HSV color code approach by clicking on this icon here. As you notice, clicking here lets you change between both RGB and HSV color code languages. You can also assign a specific color by using a hex color code, which is just a different way to handle coloring. You simply add here the hex color code of your choice and hit enter on your keyboard. Finally, here in the bottom of the color picker area, you won't be able to pick among the colors you already saved for later use. To save a color to use for later, you simply pick the color above as I explained and click on the plus icon. The color will be saved for later use in other parts of the project. You just need to click on it. Okay, enough about colors. I will get back to adding the background image as I would like to show you more things you can do to it. You can also add an appear animation to your background image. You simply need to click on it and pick one among the ones listed there. In this case, I pick left, which means the background image will appear from the left side of the screen. You can also add an disappear animation to your background image too. You just need to click on it and pick one among the ones listed there. In this case, I pick right which means the background image will disappear to the right side of the screen. A very important trick here about the appear animation is that the background image should be set to start a little later than number zero in the timeline. If you set the image to start all the way to the left side of the timeline, the appear animation won't be seen in the screen. 
So you just need to move the background image to start a little later than the number zero in the timeline. Now the coolest part here is to preview how your animation is looking so far. So for that, click on the play button. As you can see, the appear animation works perfect and the disappear animation works awesome too. This is so fun, guys. Okay, now let's get back to the settings to show you the flashed feature we have for our backgrounds. Here, you will also see an animation effect called Move A to B. With that animation, you will be able to add a moving effect to the element selected, in this case, the background image. Just click on it and a red flag will appear. If you click on the play button, you will see that there is no movement on the background, but in order to add movement, you need to move the red arrow to whatever direction you want it to move to. If you want your background to move to the right, then move the red flag to the right. If you want your background to move to the left, then move the red flag to the left. You can also do the same if you want it to move up or move it down, or you can even move it to the top right corner or bottom right corner or to the top left corner or the bottom left corner. Now there's a really cool trick here about the move A to B animation. If you want this animation to go faster, you simply have to move the red flag more to the side where you want it to move to. The farther from the center you move the red flag to, the faster the animation will be. Another important piece of advice about using this animation is that you might need to resize your background image so the black screen color in the back doesn't appear in any segment of the timeline. A word of caution here is that if you want to resize the background image, you should avoid two things. First, anytime you try to resize the background image, make sure the cursor is not over the background image, move the cursor to the number zero on the timeline, then select the background image and then resize it. And second, you should avoid moving the red flag after you have resized the background. If you need to move the red flag, you should resize the background image to its original size, then move the red flag and then resize the background image again to the size of your choice. These two important pieces of advice will help avoid making animation mistakes you might not be able to know how to fix. And this is looking awesome so far, guys. Adding an additional background. Now let's add another background so you can see how to create the connection between both backgrounds in the timeline. As you notice, I'm trying to build up a story related to transportation. In this case, I want to build up a video animation related to auto repair. Also, you notice my whole video animation project will last 10 seconds. I can increase the length of the project by using the plus icon. And if I want to work on other parts of the project, I can move the timeline right or left. For now, I will leave it at 10 seconds. I will add now the Auto Repair Center background to the timeline. I will size it. And I will also adjust its length in the timeline. In this case, I won't add an appearing animation. That is because the first background has a disappearing animation that will make the second background to appear nicely. You just need to make sure that there is no space in the timeline between both background images. Awesome. Now let's add a disappearing animation. And that's about it with the background, guys. This is just looking awesome so far. So continue now with the following video, which will show you how to use the gallery. So, see you there.